morning, it's Friday morning, end of the week, and this, this week's felt so long, and like, I don't know if it's because, like, I'm looking at it thinking, you know, we haven't got some of the stuff that I've set out to do, or we've like, we haven't done it daily in each episode, I've been thinking, oh, we can do more, however, when I look back at the week, what we've done, we've actually done loads, um, but, I'm just looking around and thinking this van probably represents my life at the minute. I'm a, it's an absolute mess, however, I know where everything is. And <laughs> I get loads done in this van. Uh, I just haven't got time to tidy it all up. And that is literally how I've like felt this morning. I've just been like, this week's draining. And I think because we've been like grafting hard, I've just, me, me immune system's been a bit low and I've just felt a bit, ugh. But, um, yeah, we've actually done, we've actually done a lot this week considering I've not felt great. Um, I got an email yesterday and it's a big email, so I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people who follow the channel now who are invested in our journey and stuff and this is like massive, so I don't know. I don't know, obviously I'm allowed to share this because it's my my thinking and my thoughts and whatever, but so before I bought the yard I emailed planning. So if you're gonna if you're gonna buy uh, a builder's yard, a plot of land, whatever, and you wanna know what you can do with it, like who do you go to? Like you wouldn't go to an architect because the architect would go, well, I don't know. Like you'd have to go and speak to planning. You wouldn't go to like a builder. You wouldn't go to a, a structural engineer, or whatever. You, you go to the planning department, the Liverpool City Council planning department. So when I first found the yard, I inquired about it being flats. So I messaged the planning officer because they'd done a pre-application. The person I bought it off because I've done a pre-application, they've done a pre-application, you don't get to see it, it's not public, um, so you don't get to see what the pre-application said. However, you can email planning to ask, so they'd put it up for sale and said, look, we've done a pre-app for 12 flats and put it in the auctions, maybe hoping that someone would, you know, just bid on the day and, and, and get it. However, I've done the right thing, gone to planning and said, look, I'm looking at buying this, can you um, tell me what like the chances are of getting planning permission on it? And they've come back and said, no chance of getting planning permission on it. Like two bungalows got refused, four bungalows got refused, and 12 flats isn't gonna get approved. So you can't even get two bungalows on it because um, the site is restricted. Um, and it's not because it's dangerous. Someone said that to me the other day, the woman I was chatting to, she's like, that site is dangerous, it's too dangerous to build houses on. It doesn't even make sense, it doesn't mean it's too dangerous to build houses on. You can build a house on anything. There's houses built in the sea. Um, anyway, so I've emailed planning and said, look, what's the chance this? said, no. So I said, all right, well, it, it's down as a builder's yard. What, what, like, do I need any planning to open it up as a re reuse it as a builder's yard? And I don't know if I'm allowed to share this, but if I am, it'll be here. If I don't share it, it won't. But well, here's the email between me and the planning officer over two years ago, and it says that, like, yeah, you can't, you, you, there's no issues at all. Let me read it in case I don't end up sharing it, and I can, um, I can at least get it right then. Um, so it says, uh, council, council retains the view that as per the application for bungalows, due to the restricted nature of the site, there's a significant restraints which are likely to prevent any residential development, especially the size of and scale proposed 12 to 15 flats, leading to an overdevelopment of the site. There will be no concerns with its reuse as a builder's yard. Like that, I've got an email off planning, off the planning officer for that area who works for Liverpool City Council saying, would be no concerns with its reuse as a builder's yard. Boom. Like, that for me is like, well, okay. Consent would be required for the erection of any buildings on the site. 
or the sighting of porter cabins or on a permanent basis but single story fit for purpose buildings would likely be acceptable so that again like yeah you can use reuse it as a build yard no concerns with that however if you want to put buildings on it you'll need to apply for planning which i have and then i've got hi andrew i know the site as it backs onto the railway previous use was a builder's merchants that's not me i haven't I haven't said that. The planning officer for the area who knows the site, who knows the area very well, has said, as previous use was a builder's merchant's, similar use would be appropriate. Bang, done. Like, what, 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 how else am I meant to read that? Um, in terms of storage building, we need to have some form of access servicing placed further in. Um, so he's basically saying that if we set it back a metre for maintenance around the building, that we could do a building and meet a setback. Um, and then I've sent him a drawing that I did of what I've proposed. And he said, yeah, you can't scale from the drawing, but clearly it's single story. It's overall height looks to be comparable with properties on the other side of Bowden Road. Basically, it's the same as the terrace is opposite. You want it to appear a commercial building, and it does. A mezzanine would not be an issue. Uh, we advise that you set out with the application, vehicle arrangements and any tree surveys, etc. that need to be doing. Um, so, for me, that says that, one, it's a builder's yard. Don't need plan of permission or anything. No concerns if it being reused a builder's yard. Two, um, you know, it's very likely that you'll be able to get a building on the yard. And as it's previously been used as a merchant, can't see any issues with it being a merchant again. Um now let's fast forward to an email i got yesterday from uh, the new not sure why we've got a different um planning officer but we've got a different planning officer now and they've come back with um let me read this out so i'll get it oh jeez this is like Sorry, I get that many emails. Where's the planning consultant? There we go. Um, so, favour to me, Majesty. I'm now in a position, having reviewed the additional plans provided and give feedback on the design of the proposal. Uh, she's got concerns about the overall size and scale of the proposal when in red conjunction with the street scene, which is primarily single-storey dwellings, which it's not. It's primarily... Um, terrace houses. Um, I haven't reviewed the latest plans and street scene anyway. This view is held. I do not consider the proposal to be acceptable given its overall size and sighting. So the proposed building is 7.1 metres in height, same height as the terraces, and 30 metres width, well, length, obviously, um, which would sit only 0.7, but she's read it off the plans on to metre back from the street scene, which is what the planning officer told us to do. The building would be obtrusive and out of character. Now, I've been told to make it look commercial because it needs to look commercial, not residential. But she's saying that it would need to look more... It's out of character and it's dominance in the locality um, to the street scene and wider locale. Um, in her opinion, the use of the site has been abandoned and she doesn't give us a date or a reason for any of that. Um... It's not benefited from any active use. It's therefore necessary to consider the change of use in the absence of a certificate of lawfulness. So now we'd have to apply again for a certificate of lawfulness to prove that it was a builder's yard on a merchant's and that it's not nothing's changed since that, which it hasn't. So oh, it's just all time consuming and delays. Um, and basically she says that... Um, on these basis that what she's just said um the application would be refused for the above mentioned reasons regardless of any further information provided um so we need to now let her know whether we want to carry on submit the information that she's asked for and it get refused and then we can either go to an appeal or um we can change the plans we can withdraw the application change like the height depth whatever else to 
something that this new planning officer thinks is okay, even though we've done them exactly to how the previous planning officer told us to do them. This new one has decided that it, it, it it's different. So I don't I don't really understand how that works. I always thought that the planning was like protocols, and it was it was like X, Y, and Z. And if you ticked all those boxes, that was it. I didn't realise it was more subjective than it, it, it's currently coming out to be. Um, and then she says she's received objections to the application stating that works at ongoing site, which include crushing brick and that we erected fence posts ready for a fence. Um, given the unacceptability unaccept of the use and proposed warehouse, I would advise that all works requiring permission are um should cease but we haven't actually done anything that requires permission other than the fence but i'm going to put the same fence back up so that doesn't require planning permission to put the same fence back up if you take a fence down and renew it then um so i haven't actually done anything on the site that requires planning and we've got the license for the brick crusher from liverpool city council but i don't know if she knows that so I need to maybe put together a big PDF of everything in one file to prove that it's all legitimate and we haven't done anything that we shouldn't. And here's the proof of it used as a builder's yard. Here's X, Y, and Z. And just do everything as factual as I can so that hopefully when she reads it, she can go, oh, well, actually. But I feel like this new planning officer's come in and she's trying to, like, she's only, like, young. She's trying to put a stamp on it and... You know, for because for, from the off, as soon as we got the first email off her, everything was negative. It was like, whoa, like, no, 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 need this, need that, da, 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 da. And obviously, she's probably just doing a job. But you could just tell from the tone of the emails that I asked to do a site visit, which I've done before with previous um, planning officers and um, staff, and they're like, yeah, that's fine. Um, I've met with planning enforcement officers. She just said, no, I don't, I don't think it'll change my opinion. Uh, it's pointless. And you're a bit like, well, you're not exactly trying to be reasonable because I'm trying to say, well, meet me on site. You tell me anything that you think I should change and I'll change it on the plans and it'll speed everything up. So I feel like she didn't want to do that because she doesn't want to pass it. Um, but yeah, so uh, today I'll have a meeting with uh, Darren, the planning consultant, and just see what what's the best option going forward. Or I just withdraw the application and don't have a shed, and I'll just have an open yard. You know, there's nothing against there's nothing against me not applying for planning for a shed if I don't want one. But disappointing and frustrating, and it all costs money and time and effort. But we will get there in the end, whatever it may be. And it's funny that all the previous correspondence for the last two three years has been that well since nineteen. 70 odd 80 odd uh no one can get planning for residential on that site however this new planning officer has recommended that residential would be more suited to the site than commercial which just go everything she said goes against everything i've had for the last two three years from planning so it's just it's bonkers to me to think that like she can just come in and totally drastically change everything and you know I've bought that yard based on what the planning and the Liverpool Council have said, and now she's changed her mind. Well, not she's changed her mind. She's come in and just totally gone against everything that everyone else has said. So, a bit frustrating, but we'll um, we'll put a plan together and crack on. So, we need to move all this, like, soil hardcore mixed. So, we're going to get rid of all that, and then we're going to bring in obviously the crushed hardcore and level this off whack it sand insulation membrane and then this is ready for concrete then should we get concrete last thing today get the concrete last thing today and then we can uh, come in monday and it'll all be uh, flat doesn't look the happiest face that So I've just updated the lads about what's been going on with the planning that they're trying to say that it's not a builder's yard. And um, so I got that last night and um, this morning, oh sorry, yesterday, I was emailing around doing all sorts and 
Um, they've asked for a couple of documents, the um, planning officer, and one of them is a swept uh, path analysis, which shows obviously the vans coming in and out of the yard and obviously where they'd be parking and stuff. So um, the only, obviously I can get someone in the UK to do that, but it just takes ages. Uh, so I went on Fiverr last night and found a guy who does them and he's just sent me them this morning. So literally, um, he's just sent me that and said, oh, any revisions to that? So he's obviously got like the van dimensions, the, the way it'll swing in, the way obviously it'll exit and stuff. And then obviously even the parking ones we've got. I'm just going to ask him to put parking bays on that because they might ask for that. Um, but yeah. And then I've just had another message from the the owners of the builder's yard originally. Um, and then the woman who bought it off them and then the woman who sold it to me. And they've all agreed to sign... Um, Affidavits, I call them affidavits, but they're spelled like affidavits, um, which are like, you know, legally binding court documents, statements of truths, to say that it was a builder's yard, it was a merchant's, and the use has not been abandoned, and they've sold it as a builder's yard. I've bought it as a builder's yard. So if I've got four documents, legal documents, saying that it's a builder's yard, and then I've got the land registry documents saying it's a builder's yard, I've got I've got the planning um, officer telling me it's a merchant. I've got um, ordnance surveys saying it's a, a builder's yard. It, even like the um, water connection and the electric connection, when they sent their plans across, it comes up as builder's yard in capital letters. That was obviously like when I'd bought it and stuff. It's not, I've not told them, I've not given them any of that information. Um, so yeah, hopefully this now will be enough to go back to the planning with and they can't she can't then use use um, her subjective opinion whether it's a builder's yard or not because it clearly is um, I mean there's even viewers obviously uh, Ben at um, P&G services um, even he said he used to he used to he used to jump over the fence and play on the builder's yard so maybe I could get an affidavit off him to say it was a builder's yard. If I can get all, more I can get, obviously, just the better it is really, isn't it? But it just feels like so unnecessary and it's all just like cost and money and time and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, fingers crossed. I've got a bit of good news this morning. I come in thinking, oh, last night I was dreading it. And then obviously this morning, I've acted on stuff last night and this morning they're all coming good. And when you're genuine and proper with people, like the sellers, even like I, uh, the sellers of the sellers, I've met them and I've just been like nice and honest and just obviously a gentleman to them. And that's come across and they've said, look, we'll do whatever we can to help you because obviously um, their dad did use it as a builder's yard and they sort of maybe see a bit of um, similar to in me, what I'm doing as what their dad was doing. So they've obviously, they've done everything to uh, help me out here. Um, so yeah. Uh, I've got to go to solicitors today to sign these documents um, and I've got a meeting with the planning consultant, Darren. Hi, mate. Hi, mate. It's me again. You, <laughs> you can guess what I want, don't you? <laughs> uh, hope, love and attention. Yeah, sure and, and some dusty concrete. <laughs> oh, we don't do that. We only do glassy stuff. Oh, nice. Um, have you got any gaps today for five meters cubed this afternoon? Where? Uh, What's your form, mate? Uh, slab. Slab. Okay. What time do you want it? Uh, one o'clock. Why not? Why not? Why not? We're doing it yet. Sammy. See you then. Bye. Bye. Right, do you want the good news? Concrete's coming at one, so get this all prepped. Insulation's on its way now. Um, get, obviously, the whacker from the yard. Get the rest of the hardcore in. Whack it, um, and then we'll get the insulation down. We've got two rolls of membrane here. Have lunch, and then, obviously, well, the good and the bad news is the concrete's coming at one. <laughs> it means that when, as soon as you get the concrete in, we're all going to the yard to crush brick. Hey! <laughs> <Get in. laughs> I mean, can I add some um, 
lengths of batten to the order for AJ Owens Builders, the insulation, please. Just five lengths of batten, please. Uh, just the cheapest one, just so we've got something to... Uh, yeah. Just five lengths, yeah. Tom, cheers, mate. Sorry. I just pressed the wrong button. You can see on my watch then that I just got a message off the guy who's done the swept analysis. I've just emailed him then saying, oh, can you change this, change that? And he's like, yeah, done. Boss, definitely uh, need to start using that more, don't I? It's an absolute nightmare trying to, like, get stuff done in this country. Is that everything we've got now? Yeah. Don't use Indians in India. Don't, don't be, um, what's the word? Nationalist or racist, racist yeah? Characterised, stereotypical. I just say, that's what people say. Yeah. Outsourcing to overseas local. Yeah, you should be, should be using local, local. I don't even know, who does a swept analysis? Is it an architect? Is it a, I don't even know. Before we go anywhere, this has got to go on, hasn't it? <laughs> so I just jumped in the van and said, oh, just, just, Pass the rubbish off the floor. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, all like drinks and... Lewis, these are yours, these. Look. <laughs> Look at Lewis. <Louis, yeah. laughs> hey, I, I'm glad to see those um, tipper gates are working well. Yeah, hold that. Be bigger. Oh, don't, don't be picky. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, leave that one. Right. Uh, Seatbelt. Look at that. <laughs> hey. Tell you what, it's good that, isn't it? Yeah. Better than, we're, better than we're, what we used to do. Uh, you have to jump up and get it off. Right, we are on the way, so you can see on that job now, there's, there's, there's no room for, what, six of us on the ground floor. Yeah. So we're going to go to another student job around the corner that we went to yesterday and done the stitching. So that way, that way that house has cracked and subsided, um, we're going to, we stitched obviously one side, we're going to go into the other side now, because they own the other side, and we're going to put obviously two or three lintels in that side. I don't know, I don't reckon the other side will have any... Uh, lintels in but I need to go to the yard and get an acro because I went in yesterday and the other side has got a um, a beam that looks like it sits right where that crack is you know like a timber a timber beam for like a doorway um, so I'm going to drop you off use whack all the thing off put your dust mask yeah. um, and then I'll get, pick the whacker up for them, drop it off, and then I'll come back and we'll throw the rubbish on here and grab whatever else we need, yeah. And we've got the big Uber today, the industrial one, which was also from China. China's done me well, you know. Yeah. I can't wait to hear, I'm going to go and visit China and like visit some of these companies that we get it off. So Joe's just googling who Leo says. You're messing. <laughs> You're messing. <legend. laughs> because one of the uh, one of the subscribers oh, said that Joe looks like Leo oh, says. Well said. <laughs> yeah, I'll show them that on the thing. Oh, that's, a, that's like. <laughs> that's just, that's just <laughs> <uncanny. laughs> no, oh, like. that's funny. I didn't know who he was. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's old a singer from years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sign an autograph, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> you get a reply back. Trying to find it now. He did say you were a good worker, to be fair. Yeah. How do you sack Leo, say eh? No oh. way. <laughs> In the other side of the property, there's this one's. Looks like it's subsided as well, you can feel it runs that way. You can see this kitchen room, that corner drops down, so the floor is like falling that way, so... This will be 
be a toy, innit? Yeah, I don't know if you won't be able to tell that on the video, but these corners are just drops dropping down. Hey, uh, make sure you shut all the doors, yeah? Yeah. And uh, this is obviously the crack. So yeah, I'll bring that. I'll show you now, obviously this, but I'm gonna go and get an acro because obviously this crack looks like it's on this this beam, so we'll acro this from the stairs just so we can take this bit out. And hey, uh, what are we gonna do with that? Because we're gonna have to take these data rails off, aren't we? To get a profit, or maybe we can get one in there, one there, and one there. Yeah. So leave, try and leave them on. See, see how we get on. If we have to take them off, we take them off, you know what I mean? We'll put new ones on, but try and keep them on, yeah. Um, right, I'll go and tip this rubbish and I'll be back. Take measure with them, Andy. There's one in the front of that. Just to do 1.2, Yeah, but you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lint there. You can just lift one up and mark it. Seatbelt check. Is that when, uh, where did I go to? Disneyland Palace the other day. And they come and they say, just pull your seatbelt so they can check it's actually connected, not um, ringing. Right, back in a minute. So I was on the way to um, pick some other stuff up. Well, I had to come back here to get the brake and that for Joe. So I'm going to drop this stuff off to Joe and uh, Dave now. And then Ben just said that he's need more, how much more hardcore do you think you need? About oh, four barrows, five barrows. Yeah. yeah sure. Um, so we're just going to go to the yard now and get some more hardcore. So, I've read the licence and the licence says that we can crush brick that is on the yard. So if it's from the yard when I've bought it, we can crush it and take it elsewhere. Yeah. Or we can bring stuff from elsewhere and crush it at the yard as long as it's, it's for the yard. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, <laughs> so if you take bricks from a house and crush it on the yard, it's going to stay on the yard. It can stay on the yard as long as the... You can't take it out, you can't take it there the yard core. No, so we can't, we can't take the bricks from here, crush them at the yard and then bring them back. How would they know though? Well they wouldn't, but you've just got to be genuine, haven't you? Um, but you can, you can take them there and as long as they're getting used on the yard. So if we need, if we need hardcore for the yard, which we do, we can take bricks from anywhere yeah, and crush them there and use them there. But we can't um, bring it back. We can't take the same bricks back. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we've got to pick up now from the we've got two piles. We've got a pile that we crushed from the stuff on the yard. And we've got a pile of bricks that we've crushed. So we've got to take the good stuff. What's the news from the other one? Just the and just the, uh, the legislation. Like no, I think it's to do with. So obviously, there's a there's an end. There's an end to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas if you can just bring bricks there and crush it, it becomes a different type of yard. Because you could do that forever. Yeah. Whereas you can only use so much hardcore, and there's only so much hardcore you can take from the yard. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it does make sense in terms of like, if there's a hundred ton on the yard when I bought it, yeah. I can only get rid of a hundred ton, can't I? Yeah. Or, but then we can bring as much as we want to the yard and crush it. But then the yard can only hold so much. So there's an end to it. Whereas if, you, if you're allowed to like, bring it, crush it, take it away, that can be forever. Yeah. So yeah, I do get it now. So if any of the neighbors are watching, you will see the colour of this hardcore will be different to the um, the ones we took, the ones we brought, because it'll be the ones that we've crushed from the yard, so that we stay compliant. Hi, Carl, are you okay? I'm fine, you Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Have you, uh, did you manage to speak to the tree officer, was yeah. it? Yeah, I got all of him this morning. Right. And it's only giving me down the tank a little bit to be fair. Have you been like, have you pruned the trees and what have you? Have a what? Over the side. Have you, have you reduced the trees over the side? So, 
when I got the site, there was two like dead trees on it that had already been cut. But obviously yeah. they had like they had like you know like little bits coming out of them. I mean the council trees, you know the ones in the road. Oh, the council, the council done them with me, yeah. The council did it. The council cut them back, yeah, and then um, I helped the them. The council, the council, right? They've had complaints, and now they they like looking. They're not happy with the, the state of the work that's been done. But what? I haven't done anything really yet. Okay, so if I reduce the height of the building or set it back further, then that's fine. Yeah, you could look at doing that. So no, for this is the extent of the canopy plotted on the plans. So you could look at reducing it back further. Yeah. yeah. So it's outside the canopy. But what I don't get is get over that issue. why don't they, why don't they just tell you that? Why did he? Why did he like just? Well, why did he just come back with like a like a, a report that doesn't like? I haven't. I haven't had anything off the council's tree officer, other than that statement I sent you that just said, "Oh, it's not suitable." Yeah. And if he just yeah. said that, I'd have gone, "Okay, I'll just I'll make it smaller." Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, but, but usually that comes back by a usually the comments are a little bit more constructive. To be fair, you're right. Yeah. You know, usually they come back with something a bit different. But he's basically said he's got two issues. And one is the yeah, he feels like you could do it on a on a uh, you know, like a raised with an air vent underneath it. He said that's fine if you can demonstrate that, but you've got to bear in mind the big HEs that are going in, so you've got to be able to demonstrate it'll carry the load that's going in it. What's the air gap? I don't, I, I still don't I still don't understand that. How do you have an air gap so under a concrete slab? Well, the concrete slab's got to be lifted slightly. How? On, like, steels? Yeah, yeah. I, I've never heard of that. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's been done quite regularly. Uh, oh, I get you. Know, yeah. this, this is just for the warehouse bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get you. So I'd have yeah, to, I'd have to pile, I'd have to pile like every three meters, and then, yeah, I get you, yeah, yeah. So I can do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like it's on still, but you can't see him because you've got the, uh, you, you almost got like a skirt around. The yeah, so it's, it's like basically just, building, just a standard. It, 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 yeah. It's piling. It's a piling slab. Yeah, yeah. That's it with the beam being yeah, yeah. raised. That's what, that's you know what, what we've, so, yeah. that's what we've said it was going to be anyway, piling. Yeah. So that gets over that issue. Then the other, the only other issue is then the the, the the pruning needed to the trees, which he's not prepared to support. So if it can be physically moved out of the canopy, then that solves that issue. Yeah. So th does he know that the council come and cut those trees back? No, but I'm happy to tell him if you want. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it will be on record. It's, it's all. It's all. Yeah, it's all separate entities. You know who it was that did it? Did you get any names or? I've got him. I've I've got him on video. <laughs> it's on YouTube. So have you? Yeah. Could you could you send me that video? Yeah. And is it like a council wagon? It it, it he showed up in a council car, and brought a telescopic pole out, and started cutting it, and he was an old fella, and he asked me could I do it, so he started cutting it, and then I I took over and. Brilliant. And done it for them. I can't believe Council they just. Have a fool on it. They don't even. They don't even talk to each other, do they? Well, they're that big. It does happen. Yeah. You know what I mean. You know, it does does happen. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, it's it's just it's just that they've got to be careful with the 
He was from the council, yeah. I've got I've probably still got the emails. Oh, if you can forward that on to me. Anything like that'd help a lot, I think. Yeah, I mean I, I he told me he told me that you can cut back any trees that are on your land anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can. You you you've not done anything legally wrong. It's just they they're saying like the state of the work. But if it's a council that's done that work then uh, What do you mean like the state of the work? I mean? Like how how do you cut a tree back? Right. Other than right, so there's a British standard to tree pruning. Oh there yeah, you go. I didn't yeah, know that. Uh, and it is, yeah, and he's saying that it's not been done in accordance with it. Because if you prune it with, I've not seen the work. I didn't know anything about it. I phoned him this morning. <laughs> you know, he's like, all oh, right, I, you know, uh, if you like these stumps and things like that, it caused it decay within the tree and can have like a detrimental impact upon it. Okay. Long-term. Yeah, I didn't know that. So there, yeah, there is. A, British standard tree, believe it or not. Yeah. yeah, he just he just so, come uh, with a telescopic pole and was just like, yeah, just just cut it off. You can forward any details you have onto me. The emails where they've agreed it. You know the the video where there's a council guy coming out. Yeah, I'll I, I'll send you it now. I'll uh, I'll try and screenshot yeah. it. I'll send the link. Yeah, yeah. Anything like that. I'll like the if, if he emailed you. The email. I'm trying to think what they've done because it was on I phoned them I emailed them like over a year ago about pruning them back and then right. we, had, we had um one of the branches like was literally drooping down and touching the floor and um yeah. that one must have that, that one was like literally about to snap and I was phoning them phoning them phoning them saying like this branch is stopping me from doing work on the yard and then eventually it got to the point where yeah. it had snapped, and I phoned the council and said, "Look, you know, I've been I've been phoning about this branch for like ten months, and it it it's finally snapped." Right. And they said, "Right," and they sent someone out within an hour. What else has he said then? Is that it? It's just obviously if we That's if we it. pile it. There, there is only two issues. There is only two issues. As a tree officer, I don't know if there's any other issues planning-wise. So. I mean, the planning, the planning, um, the planning are asking for something from you, not if that makes sense, or unless you speak to him and then he can tell planning. But I've got till Wednesday to provide, like your comments, basically. Yeah. But if if you if you well, can. What I can do is we we can do something and update everything. I might need some different information for your access and stuff like that. But what I'll do, and once I'm supposed to be getting now. I'll put it in an email to tell you what I need. Okay. Because we'll need amended plans and stuff if you're going to move the building outside the crowd. Oh, yeah, right? but no, no, this isn't to move the building, yeah. But, so, at the moment, you can just put on that, if you just put on the comments that, like, um, obviously it's been cut back by, or whatever whatever you need to, but I can't change the, I can't change the plans just yet. I, can, I need to go back to them and say whether I'm amending them or not. So... But she's waiting yeah. for like three officer reports for for the current one. So the current one, yeah, I mean, we I, provided them, but they're the ones that he's commented on. Yeah, I mean, I'm going, I'm going the yard now. I'll take a picture of the canopy. I don't think it's in the way. Yeah, it's not. It's not where where it is now. Where the council and that have cut it back to. It's not in the way. Right. So the, the work that the council's done. Yeah, so the the right. the, the well, way the the plans I've put in now are fine. It won't it won't touch the canopy of the tree. Uh, right. So I might need to update my report to them plans. Then if you change your plans. No, but I'm saying I'm not going to change. At the minute, I'm not going to change the plans. I need to provide the tree, like your comments on the on those plans, and then if they yeah, ask me to change the if they ask me to change the size of it, I can. Are they the ones that were within my report? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So nothing's right. changed on the yeah, building. Like, right. let me let right. me send you let me I'm going to the yard now, let me send you a picture and you'll be able to see that yeah. um where where the height of my building is like seven meters and there's no there's no branches in the in the in the reach of seven meters. Yeah. Brilliant. Sorted. Right, I'm gonna fold him back. Now. And then obviously the ground yeah. thing is fine. That's we, we've we've yeah. always said that from the start, so... Yeah. Right, 
Right. Okay. Leave it with me and I'll phone him back now. I'll send you, I'll send you yeah. these pictures and evidence now. Yeah. See you in a bit. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. They're just being, they're just being difficult, aren't they? Who's that? He's, he's a tree officer I've paid. So I've had to pay for a tree officer to come and do a report. And then the I, I send my tree officer report and the council have just totally ignored my tree officer report and done their own. So it's like I've paid 500 quid for someone to come and do a report and the council have just ignored it and said, well, our tree officers said this, this and this. And you're like, what was the point in me doing that if you've got a tree officer that is going to look at it anyway? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So now I've got loads to do. Remind me to grab an acro and I can't forget to grab an acro for that job done on. So just literally get this tape measuring so there's no in it. There's five metres there. Yeah. So the tape there's five metres. So the tape is actually or the scaffold poles actually What's that? 6.4 metres. So if I stand this up now, Lou, help us stand this up. And then uh, we'll video that. We're a metre away then. In the boundary is. Yeah, yeah. And in the way of the gutters, look. That's 6.4. Um, and the hey, so it didn't have any lintels in this side? I see that. Is that the gap? That's a crazy gap. Yeah, they do need to have a look at this again, don't they? Uh -huh. So this is like, this is the initial fix. Oh. The main one is going to be what, like obviously underpinning or rebuilding it if it's too far gone. But I'm I'm surprised they only put lintels in one side and not the other. Probably yeah. But I mean, if that if that if that if that building sinks, like these are only doing like. Yeah, they're not going to do much. If it's do you know what I mean? Especially down. considering the size of it, like you know, they think of the weight of that. Oh, you've done well here, haven't you? Yeah. Um, just give us a shout then when you think you can put one more in up there. I've got the yeah, acro. Yeah, I've chipped out there, yeah. So if you put the acro underneath that pillar there, yeah. and then obviously we can get that third one in and then... Do you do Johnson bricks? Yeah, no, we can do them between these two buckets. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Get them on the tipper and then... more bricks, Joe? Yeah, I could do yeah. a couple of full ones. They're all bro. Oh, they're on the other van, aren't they? Let me know how many full bricks you need. I'm going to go to that job now. All right? Okay. Sounds. Good job, though. So the lads have got a bit more hardcore to do. Whack it. And just as we say it, the insulation's just turned up. So the floor insulation. So you can either use, um, I can't remember the millimetres of Kingspan, but you can either use Kingspan, uh, shorten. Uh, millimetres or you can use 150 mil of jab light yeah excuse me and then we've also got some batten so what Ben's going to do is Ben's going to strap a batten round um, the perimeter to the bottom of the batten so that when we concrete we know where we're putting um, putting the concrete up to and then we'll come I'll come tomorrow and uh, power float it is that
Uh, which we're just saying, it's a good time to practice on these because it's all getting covered. Yeah. And no one is bothered what it looks like as long as it's structurally <laughs> sound. Yeah. So, for anyone who doesn't know what, um, what do we call it? Uh, oh, my, my mind's been blank this week, you know. Um, what we call, like stitching. Okay. Stitching. So, this is stitching. Basically, you span the thing with re So, this has got steel in that's cast into the concrete, which reinforces it. And if this were to try and move, I mean, it's a bit different on this because, you know, it's quite a big, it's such a big load in the in the garden that it's it's still going to move, you know what I mean? But this will just limit the cracking. But hopefully, you know, that's settled and it doesn't want to move anymore. And the thing, if it does move again, these will have to get it underpinned and potentially drop the back. You can see the lads are, well, have um, done all the insulation. So we use 150 mil of the jab light. Um, and then obviously we put the damp proof membrane on. So we used to do it, um, damp proof membrane, then insulation on top. But it doesn't actually make a difference um, which way you do it. It's still got the same thermal qualities, etc. Um so to not damage the damp proof we normally do it on top of the insulation because normally you'll have to put like a, a sand binding on top of the hard core that you've whacked so that it's not um it doesn't pierce the damp proof so i'm just fitting the last bit of it uh, we didn't have enough or we, we did have a, we had a hundred mil one but it was too thick so we've got a just going to use a foil board now as well. Food on the go. My second favourite place, pink salmon. Where do you have lunch? Hey, where do you go? Did you? Butty? Meal deal. Uh, we need a bit of wood across the front door as well, don't we? To... And then we need to make sure we tidy this up at the end of the day. So we have to uh, block Tom! Five pounds for every car that goes past you. <laughs> just so he doesn't sit there. Last time they were all just driving past him, weren't they? He was just stood on the corner like. Right, straight in. Do you want to build a little ramp here? That'll be trolling, though. Nah. I reckon it's good. You reckon? Uh, it does good, but they haven't got much of a run up then. Here we go, membranes all down, put some blocks there and as we put the concrete in now we'll uh, pull the blocks away and then put the poker ready and then Ben is just putting a perimeter around in the timber to where we need to pour the concrete to, so under mil. Now we've got a normal rig. Here we go. Ben's got the wood ready and started getting these in. So as we go, I'll start tamping it with me um, with the scaffold. See if you can keep going. So see the bottom of the wood? Yeah. That's your uh, that's your line, yeah. So as long as you're either above it or up to it, then I can tap it. It's hard to film this. Right, as the lads are bringing it in, just getting it level with the wood. Obviously, we level with the damp proof there. We've lasered that. I'm just using the ladder ring to tamp it. And then I say, I'll have to come in tomorrow or Sunday and power float this with the machine. I reckon halfway is about here. Reckon. Tom? Just seen a van pull up there. It's a five of that. It's a five. <laughs> right, I am off to sign these documents with the solicitor. So, thankfully, after getting that email yesterday and me putting out loads of feelers and emails, messages, I just feel like some good's happening for once. That all these people are coming out their way now to sign these legal documents in support of like me and the yard and it's I 
don't know it's just obviously it's a nice feeling that you know because it's so easy in, in half two in the, on a Friday to think nah I'm not doing that you know what I mean is he, is he messing you know what I mean like the, the person who sold me the yard could just be like I've got my money now see you later but now she, she's leaving her job early going to come and sign these and um, and again I've even got like the sellers who sold then and the sellers who sold the neighbours their house have come forward and hopefully you know all this all these good deeds are gonna hopefully uh, be worth it yeah but I don't know there's days where there's days where I go through and think am I doing the right thing am I being a nice person am I and then I don't know but let's get these documents done sent off to the right people and hopefully it will answer the adverse possession and the planning so yeah fingers crossed or if they come up with something else there'll be another hurdle there's no doubt but I'm ready I'm ready to jump I'm ready to sprint and jump <laughs> Uh, I, I've just got three of the affidavits signed. Um, I'm just waiting on Julie, who sold it to me. She's going to go there on her own and sign it. Um, so we'll have them. Obviously, they stamp by us list to say that yeah, he's like seeing them sign and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. And they also said like the dad used to store diggers and all sorts of things, which is good. Oh, okay, perfect check. Um, so what the options are now is the um, I've got the have you got the um, turn and circle things I sent you the van yes yeah yeah I've just seen those yeah that's what I was just looking at when you come is that, is that look okay yeah yeah those look great yeah yeah and it shows the parking as well because they wanted the actual spaces set up yeah good because I, I, I told them to add that last sure. minute yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely spot on. I don't understand how it can be so it can be so subjective that John said as long as it's no bigger than the terraces opposite. Yeah. yeah. But then she's now saying that every house on the street is is single story. Yeah. I mean, we've got that's nonsense for a start. Because yeah. they're, they're not they're not all single story. Um, but yeah, we've we've had similar across the at the moment. We're going through various appeals where. We've been told one thing by one planning officer and then a totally different thing by another planning officer. Yeah. Um, and we've got things where even like we've got as forward as um, recommendation for approval, drafting a legal agreement, agreeing all the conditions, and then the case officer left the council to go to world council. New case officers come in and says, I disagree with all of this and we're going to refuse it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. For like a fairly decent sized scheme as well. Oh. So they'd have been they'd have been tens of thousands into money as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fifty grand in the hole just in the, oh my god the planning fee, and then you know they've spent money on lawyers and everything, getting the legal agreement all done. They've got tenants lined up. Oh wow! Uh, it's just an absolute mess. So what happened there? Um, the, the council, yeah, the case officer just said, "Well, I've taken a different view," and we said, "Well, we've got all this evidence from the your predecessor saying that it was all fine and acceptable." And, with policy and she said well I've, I disagree and I've checked with my line manager and they've agreed with me and given me authorization to refuse it so what what did the, uh, the is that still ongoing or is that yeah that's still ongoing yeah that's what I was say, so weeks. Yeah. what's what's my options now then we've uh, changed the uh, withdraw the application and or amend oh, no. it you, you could seek to amend it to so we're providing the additional information you've asked for which will hopefully resolve all those points um, that we discussed. We could submit a certificate of lawful use with those stat decks and just say that we're happy to make that submission to formalise the lawful use because but we'll also include them as part of the planning application. Yeah. Um, then it will come down to whether or not they accept the, the height of the building. So we can either amend it as part of this application yeah let them refuse it on those grounds and appeal against it or um, so we're better we're, are we because i've never gone through this are we better provide as much as much information as we can and then they refuse it and then we go to appeal 
is that yeah, better in the appeal process or yeah because it yeah. makes the appeal so much easier and okay then you're only fighting the appeal on one so if you answer everything it. other than she says that so the only my only worry is that like you know she's saying that she believes it's been abandoned so like surely they're not going to grant a lawful development certificate for existing use or is that is that a, is that a different ball game uh, yeah, it's a, it's a totally different ballgame. So the way that the um, legislation works is if you submit a certificate of lawful use and that's included included in your evidence is evidence to support the view that the use has not been abandoned, such as those statutory declarations. Yeah. The legislation says that the council has to take that at face value unless there's any counter evidence. So, so but what if they what if they just come back with well We've looked on Google Images and it looks green. Well, that, that, in my view, isn't going to be sufficient counter evidence. Yeah. Because obviously I've got it until she's sold it to me, and then obviously since I've got it, it's clearly a builder's yard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there was even an appeal today, um, although it was for an HMO, not for a. Um, so it's not directly relevant, but the way the case law that they reference is directly relevant. So that was where. The, um, someone had a, an HMO in 2014. They'd, um, there was a period where the property wasn't occupied when the Article 4 direction came in. And they've said it's been abandoned. And the council have said, well, it wasn't in C4 use at the time, so therefore that use had been abandoned. Um, and the inspector has said, well, no, just because it wasn't in active use doesn't mean it was abandoned. OK, so that's good for us, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, and we can reference the same case law. I'm going to measure these trees now, I'm going to send them to Carl, and he's going to send me a report that basically <laughs> ticks the boxes for their tree officer, all his comments, yeah. and then we're, you're going to submit that with the, um, what's it called, the um, turn and circle of a van. Yeah, the tracking diagrams, yeah. Yeah, um, and then she's still likely going to refuse it. So. What, what, so what is the option? Are we going to go for an amendment or go for a refusal and then appeal it? What's the best? Well, what, what we can do is we can send over that information and say we respectfully disagree over your assessment of the street scene. Um, here's an email from John Dagnall that said keep it no higher than the adjacent buildings. Mm -hmm. We've done that. Um, if you refuse it on these grounds, you know, we'd consider that unreasonable and say, like, given the fact that we've addressed the tree issue, we've provided the parking plan, we've provided the vehicle tracking diagrams, can you please just approve it? If they come back and still say, no, we disagree, um, we can then say, OK, what if we reduce the height? Yeah. What if we change the size of it? And then they might turn around and say, no, if you want to do that, you need to withdraw and submit a new application. Um, but then at least, you know, you'll know by then. I don't think they would go down that route, to be honest. I don't think they would insist on withdrawing and submitting a new application, because it just wastes everyone's time. Yeah. Which is mad, like, I was saying to uh, the tree officer, like, why don't they just say this stuff? Like, why don't they just say <laughs> that, like, oh, well, if you pile it, it'll be fine? Yeah. Yeah, or like, oh, yeah, I, well, it's a bit too I've close just, to the canopy. Why don't you just, if you move it back a little bit, that'll be fine. Why does everything have to be so, like, no, you submit it and we just say yes or no? Yeah, yeah. And that's, I've had that conversation with the council so many times about, like, they give us half a response. Yeah. And I understand that it's not their job to design the scheme and it's not their job to... Um, okay, it kind of is, isn't it? They're, they're the ones saying yes or no to it, like... Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're supposed to engage proactively with us that's the way that the policies the national government policy is worded it says that local authorities should engage proactively so should we ask should we ask hannah to have another site visit i think so yeah yeah I mean, because she can't that. say no again surely <laughs> I mean, well, if, if that's if the legislation is to in. if that's the legislation I think we reference that we, when we go back to her and we, once we send all this stuff over, we go back to her and we say that um, here's all the information we've asked for, here's our position on it. Um, with regard to this national guidance that talks about engaging proactively, can yeah. we have another site visit and or can we have a first site visit? Uh, yeah, a first one, them, yeah. Um, to try and yeah, move it forward. Yeah. 
Okay. The the other option um, would be to do it piecemeal, where you were to withdraw it, submit a lawful development certificate on its own, mm-hmm. submit a separate application for the fence, and then you've got the lawful use established, you've got the fence in place, and then you submit a separate application for the building. But yeah, ideally, I mean, you would rather wrap it all up in one, because otherwise you're just going to be dragging it out for months. Yeah. Uh, and obviously cost more, will it? And, and well, I mean, you've, yes, yeah, actually, yeah, it would, because I was going to say you've already got all the information, so it wouldn't cost more, but it would, because you would still have to pay for each individual submission. Yeah, I get you. So it'd be an extra few hundred pounds that you need to pay to the council. So she's she's time. come back and said that the fence, the timber fencing, would be fine, wouldn't it? I, I, even that, like, how, 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 <laughs> like, how annoying is that that she's gone? No, you can't put the timber fencing up. And then come back and said, well, we don't want concrete ones. We'd prefer a timber fence. And you're just like, are you, are you all right? Yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Right, concrete's done. Ben, did you get a video of the concrete? Ben got a video of the concrete. Does it look good? Um, so we've got an hour on the yard. Uh, if you can get these bricks stacked, um, we just need to tidy it up, make it look as good as we can yeah obviously leave that bit for now just get rid of the bricks and if you stack the full bricks and then wheel out of the halves to the crusher come on go 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 that's the minimum that's the minimum lewis hey working your ass off the bare minimum are you haven't you haven't asked me about getting paid today <coughs> Operation side of the yard. Well on the way, so we're gonna put some hardcore down here so I can use the forklift and get all the brick pallets along that wall. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna try and get through as much of this hardcore as we can. And I'll use the digger to so we've only got that pile, that pile and this pile. Uh, and then the rest is all bricks then. So that's it for Friday, we've levelled a bit of this, got through most of this hardcore, chipped away at that, there's just that pile, that pile, all the bits round the crusher, and this pile over here, so I don't know, I don't know what the best thing to put on the top of this until, you know, just to whack it with, and then just this pile. Um, Oh, it's just never ending with bricks and then we just keep bringing more right are you ready have we locked that van yep. right do you want to sign off <laughs>